Now joining me is Kayla and her mom, Gina. How are you guys doing today? Doing well. Very good. Very good. Look at this big smile. No, you should see these beautiful ladies. They're color coordinated. They are. They both have this, the beautiful pink. I love they it. They match. Now, Kayla, you, um, as, as I'm reading over, uh, over your bio here, you have um, had dilated cardiomyopathy. Yes. Which basically says, Kayla, you need a new heart. Yes. And Kayla has a new heart. Yes. Yes, that's right. Now, tell me a little bit, uh, either either you, Kayla, or Mom, tell me a little bit about exactly what dilated cardiomyopathy is. Basically, where your heart is not functioning. It's not pumping properly, okay. from what I understand. Um, that the heart isn't strong enough to circulate everything through it, and it makes you very weak. And basically, the alternative is you need a heart. You need a heart. Yep. And you got one. Yes. Now, the, 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 this is, when I was reading over this, I thought that this was pretty cool. Um, you learned that you were uh, 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 learned that she she was on the waiting list and late on a Friday night, and within two days, you had a donor. Yes. That is unbelievable. That is amazing. And on Super Bowl Sunday of last year, she learned uh, you learned that there was a, a new heart for her. Now, do you remember which teams were in that Super Bowl? No, but I remember I watched Beyonce. <laughs> my favorite nurse. She's got the important stuff right. So you watched the halftime show. Yes. Don't remember who played, but Beyonce was on there. Yes. <laughs> she did. Yeah, that, that's that's really funny. Now tell me a little bit about uh, Kayla going into. I mean, receiving a new heart. You're only twelve. Yes. So you're obviously very young. When was it? When was this? Two years ago. Two so years ago, she was ten. Ten. Yes. So I mean, yep. you're a ten-year-old little girl, and is it is it Really, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Connecting in your brain how huge having a heart transplant is. I mean, I don't think I was thinking about that as much. I think I was, well, one, I was just, like, sleepy a lot, so there wasn't really a lot of time to think of that. And I when I was that. up, I wasn't doing a lot. I would, like, watch a little bit of TV and then go back to sleep. So nothing was really connecting. For That's me. the word I was looking for. Yes. What about you, Mom? Oh, it connected for me. <laughs> <laughs> um, when, we, when we got here, within, I would say, 24 hours of getting here, it was determined that um, ultimately she would need a heart transplant. Uh -huh. So um, I just remember maybe we got here on a Tuesday, maybe that Wednesday, um, Dr. Asante Corain, who is like our doctor, <laughs> um, just I just remember him saying to us that, and the background is that Kayla's dad also had this. I read about that, and, yeah. Um, he was um, December 31st of 2005, the same year Kayla was born. Um, they were going to transfer him to Tampa General to put him on the heart transplant list, but he didn't make it. He didn't make it. So um, when Dr. AK was saying if Kayla didn't get a heart, that she would go the way of her dad. Oh. So it was imperative. imperative. I understood exactly yeah. what that meant. So it was all like... Through everybody's prayers and our faith, it, it happened just that fast. Is it is it genetic? It is genetic. It is genetic. It is genetic. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear about no. her dad. It's, it's you know that and, and I'm but I'm glad that you know you okay anyway. Um, <laughs> now I was also reading that. Um, do you still have to, or was this at one point that you had to take 46 pills a day? Okay, so that's like not anymore. <laughs> but there was a. Time. But I still have to take meds. Okay. I don't think I'll ever be off of meds unless something, some miracle happens. Right. But I don't have to take as many. That's good. Are you down to like 22? Because that's still too many I'm as far sure. as I'm concerned. We're in, the, we're in the 20 to 30 range. Okay. Wow. That's better than 46. Yeah, but I take them all at once. And it's one handful? It scares people. Because yeah. like, I'll just dunk them in my mouth and swallow it. You're one of those people them? that can do that. Oh, oh my gosh. I th I'm, th I'm thinking one handful. And just, <laughs> I used to take it like that, but then just I just... It just takes too much time. Yeah. <laughs> I got more important things to do than sit here 22 times and take all these pills. Yeah. Well, I'm glad that you're at least half what, half of you know, half of them are gone. That's good. And hopefully in a year or so, another half will be gone. You'll be down to 10 a day. That would be good. That would be awesome. That Amazing. would be awesome, wouldn't it? So I also hear that you like to crochet. Yes. You do? What's the, what, what are you working on right now? I'm not working on anything currently. What did you just finish? The last thing I made was a baby blanket for babies in need in other hospitals. Oh my gosh. Look at that. I love it. She's giving back now. <laughs> she knows what it's That's like awesome. to be in the How hospital. How long does it take to make a baby blanket crocheting? It depends on like what my schedule is because the one I was working on took me like forever. 
and then like I started working on another one because the one that I first made was the first time I ever crocheted so it took me like a little longer uh -huh. but the second one I started making like it was easier for me to know what I was doing and it sure. didn't take me as long did you get to meet the baby that ended up with your blanket no <laughs> I wish I would have <laughs> well maybe next time you can hand deliver it maybe that would be pretty cool yes so um, you're 12 years old what grade are you in I'm in seventh. Seventh grade? Yes. All right. And uh, what's your favorite class? Science and math. Good. I was, uh, She's we're, smarter than us. Way smarter <laughs> than us. And you know the kids that we were talking to yesterday, their favorite was lunch. <laughs> and so I'm glad that you're at least you know, doing science and math. That's good. And your favorite isn't lunch or recess. Um, how does it feel to have that new heart inside of you? doesn't feel like anything really changed. People ask me, like, what the scar is, but other than that, nothing really changed. Well, you've got some more energy. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. <laughs> so, I mean, like, be before you had the, 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 the transplant, could you, um, like, what, what, what would you get up out of bed and what, how much of a day could you, could you have? Would you, like, you know, what, did, did walking across the floor wear you out or walking to, to the kitchen? Would I mean, were you, by the time you got there, were you tired? I mean, I don't think so. It's hard to remember. I don't remember a lot before the transplant. Yeah. My mom said it's because they put me on a lot of anesthesia. Oh. Yeah. So before the transplant, uh -huh. so let's go January okay. of 2016. She was fine. Before the transplant. Before the tra like she was fine. That summer she had done Zumba contest um, with my mom over the summer. She was fine. And then the last week of January, she got what we thought was bronchitis. Hold on a second. So she hasn't been dealing with this since birth. This no. just started. Yes. Okay. Now it's making a little bit yes. more sense. Okay. So we, she was diagnosed with, bron we always call it the bronchitis. <laughs> the bronchitis. Um, got sent home from the ER with a Z-Pack. We were doing the regimen of the Z-Pack. But as I started to notice some of the side effects of the medicine, uh -huh. she was displaying those. Well, we went back to the, she went to school, tired, yeah. lethargic. Um, so then maybe February 1st, we went back to the ER in the morning and they sent us home. And then that afternoon, we went back to the ER because I'm like, something is not Something's right. Not right. Wrong, yeah. And they were getting ready to discharge us again. And a nurse who, I'm thankful for this nurse, the nurse who, he was usually on the adult side, but they were short on the pediatric side. He said, before you go, and they gave us a little follow-up to follow up with her, cardi with the cardiologist. And before you leave, let me just do one more set of vitals. He did one more set of vitals and the room changed. Oh. And they were like, we're gonna have to admit her. Yeah. Well, as the, as the night grew longer and longer and longer, the hospital decided we can't treat her with what's going on with her heart. She needs to be transferred. And they gave us the option of um, all children's in Tampa or all children in St. Pete. Mm -hmm. And I had never known, didn't know anything about St. Pete. So I was like, mm, I don't know. How am I gonna tell my family how to get here? <laughs> and I just asked the ER doctor, I was like, what would you do? And he said, for what she needs, I would suggest all children's in St. Pete because they have specialists for everything. Yeah. And I said, okay, sign us up. And February 2nd, we, over the night, like we got here February 2nd around seven o'clock in the morning. Groundhog day. And, <laughs> <laughs> and from there, we were, he, we were, she was admitted into the hospital not even a week before she got her heart. Sounds like everything moved very, very fast. Quickly. Yes, I'm glad because yeah. that that because there there are a lot of people that end up on a heart transplant For list months or years. It even takes yeah. a long time. Well, that's awesome. Awesome. That's fantastic news. Kayla, thank you so much for taking the time to come out and talk to us. Anything thank that you, you want to add about your who's like your, your favorite nurses, your favorite doctors? Ooh, Ooh yeah, the shout list. Shout some people out. Come on. <laughs> okay. Drop so my names. Fa my favorite doctor is obviously Mr. Asante Karain. Uh huh. Um, my favorite nurse. Miss Tassa, because she, she was there like every day, and when she wasn't there, she would make arrangements. So like the day she did come back, she would always be my nurse. Oh, nice. So, 
and then she was the one that let me eat my spaghetti. <laughs> Like when I wasn't supposed to eat it because. <laughs> well, don't me no that. No, like it was. She was there, but like something was going on where I, like I wasn't supposed to eat it, but she let me eat it. So. <laughs> oh, was this discharge day? <laughs> oh, discharge day was a was. A mess. A mess. Was but it? Because they um she had a, what is that? A pick line. Oh. Okay. She had a pick line and they took the pick line out, but they noticed that the pick line was short by a half an inch. Oh. So they went into thinking that maybe it floated and to all of these, like, oh, geez. doing an x ray, doing an MRI, cat and scans. cat scans upon just looking, for, just looking for it. <laughs> and I all of a sudden said, Do you think that it could have gotten cut when they took the old heart out? So they called the surgeon and looked in the surgeon's notes. That's there was. What wow. happened? A little bit of the pick line got cut when they did the transplant. Well, good. It's not still in there. floating around, you know, <laughs> where it shouldn't be. I was really upset. I bet. They put two training kits on me, and then they wouldn't let me eat. And then they wouldn't <laughs> let me use the bathroom. So I was in the CAT scan thing, and I was just like... Starving. Got to yes. go to the bathroom. And it was like, I was falling apart <laughs> on discharge day. Well, I'm glad that you're all together now. Yes. yes. All right. <laughs> Kayla, Gina, thank you so much for stopping by and sharing your story. God bless both of you. This, thank you. What thank a wonderful you. story. Thank you. Thank you. Fantastic. Round of applause. Let it go.